Hi! In this tutorial we're going to look at using Zara 3D Maker 7 with Movie Edit Pro Plus or Premium or Video Pro X. We'll see how to get it open, what it does, and what are some of the limitations. Magic's Movie Edit Pro has some special titles in it under the Templates tab, Title Templates, 3D Animation Basic. I'll select the first one and insert it on the timeline. Double click on it to open the editor and change the text. Accept it and run it. To see more, drag the right side out to lengthen the object to see a few rotations. I'll check the properties of this object. We can see that this has an extension of X3D, which is the format used by 3D Maker. So these titles are all 3D Maker files. MovieEdit Pro comes with a crippled version of 3D Maker, so the full program doesn't open. However, it does open in Video Pro X. To get the same features in MovieEdit Pro, you can download the trial version of 3D Maker from the Magix.com site, install it, and try it out from within MovieEdit Pro. Watch as I open the same title from within VPX. I first get a message with some instructions, then clicking on OK opens the 3D Maker editor. With this, I have full access to all of the parameters. Before continuing on with 3D Maker, I want to import my own special shape, say a logo. To do this, use a vector program like Zera Designer Pro X or Zera Photo and Graphics Designer. Here I'm in Zera Designer Pro X and I've already created a shape. I'll create another one quickly using one of the smart shapes, but you can use the tools to draw your own shape but it must remain 2D. No textures, no transparency or feathering is allowed or required, just a 2D shape. I'll create a rectangle with rounded corners and I'll round them a bit more. I'll create another smaller rectangle over top and change the color to see it and I'll remove the rounded corners. I want to shape something like the other one with a hole in it, so I'll select the inner rectangle, hold down the shift key and select the large rectangle so that both are selected and then click on Arrange, Combine Shapes, Subtract Shapes. Now I've got a shape with a hole in it. And I've now got two shapes that I can copy and paste into 3D Maker. Back in 3D Maker, I'll stop the animation and click on the AB button to get the cursor on the text. Use the left and right arrows to move the cursor. I'll delete the X3D and type my initials. I want to insert my logo shape from Zara so I'll switch to Zara, select my shape, copy it to the clipboard with a right click, copy or control C, and then go back to where I want to insert it in 3D Maker and do a control V to paste it. Now there's my shape. I'll put that full screen. Now I'll open up the text editor and while holding down the shift key I'll move the cursor to the left with the left arrow key to select just the shape. Now I'll increase the size of the shape to 200%. I'll move the cursor and holding down the shift key, select the text and change the size to 40%. I want to end up with the text in the whole of my shape. To get the text below my shape, I need to add a line break. There are two buttons. The first one is shift enter, which puts my text on the next line. The other button enter will put it on another page or on the back side. I'll play with the sliders to bring the text up into the whole of my shape. I want the text a little bit more to the right, so I'll add in a couple of spaces in front of the text. Now I'll select the text and change the font. Good, now I'll click on OK and turn off the cursor. Using the animation slider, we see that the whole image rotates, as this was the animation mode active when I opened 3D Maker. Now I can play around on the screen in the two modes. One to rotate the image around to what I want as the look at the start of an animation. And the other mode is to adjust the extrusion depth. Well that's basically all that 3D Maker does. It animates extruded text. There are no drawing tools and the 3D part is simply an extrusion of the text and any shapes. You can't build or export a 3D model to be used in another 3D modeling program for example. So what else can we do? I've highlighted just the text and I'll go to the color editor. I'll change the color of the text face. 
something like this. And I'll do the sides. And I like that. You can also use textures. I'll turn on the animation and go to the animation tool. I want to slow this down a bit, so I'll select the text and then I'll change the parameters to 60 frames per cycle and 30 frames per second. The pause is just that, a pause after each rotation. There are many types of animations available under the pop-down list, but I'll just stick with this one. I want the shape to remain static but the text to rotate. I'll select just the shape and then I'll uncheck the box where it says text. Now only the text rotates but it jerks after each rotation and I only see the front face. I'll stop and select the text again and uncheck front face only. Now when the JCB rotates we see the back side. I don't like the depth of extrusion so I'll select the extrusion options. With the text still selected, I'll reduce the depth. Mm, I like this. There are other options like buttons, but uh, we're not going to look at these right now. Since I may want to use this model in other projects, I'll save the file as an X3D file. You can also export to a JPEG or an animation like a GIF or AVI. To get this back to VPX, I'll click on the X at the top right and we're back in VPX. Whoops, there's no animation. I forgot to turn it back on before leaving, so I'll double click on the object to reopen it again in 3D Maker. I'll turn on the animation, quit and go back to VPX. Now it rotates and I'll stretch out the object to see several rotations. Now remember I made up a second shape in Zara and I'm going to show you what happens if I put that on a second page. I'll reopen the animation in 3D Maker, stop the animation, turn on the cursor and the editor and after the JCB I'll click on the diamond or the enter button. Now I'll copy the second shape from Zara and paste it here and type some text. Now when I run the animation we see the first shape and JCB and then after one revolution we see the second shape and the new text. There are many more features in 3D Maker that you can play with and I'm not going to show them all here but there is uh, design options with a design picker with ready-made shapes. You can import a shape as a button that you created and saved using Zara. Here's an example of the shape that we had at the beginning. I saved it as a Zara file and when I import it comes onto the screen as a button. I'll reduce the size of the text so that it ends up inside my shape but there's nothing else that I can do. I can't animate the the button and the text separately or stop the, the button. They're all tied together so whatever happens with one happens with the other. There are also other options like bevel options shadow options, texture options, lighting, and more. And pressing on F1 or looking under help will bring up the manual to assist you. To wrap up, 3D Maker gives you an animated extrusion for text and other 2D objects. I hope that this has helped you understand what 3D Maker does and how it works with MovieEdit Pro and VPX. I suggest that you download the trial version and try it out for yourself. Do some experimenting. Thank you for watching. Until next time, enjoy.